Mathematicians have been interested in area minimizing surfaces and surfaces of constant mean curvature for several hundred years. These surfaces are of pure mathematical interest in both geometry and partial differential equations and arise in a number of applied fields. In this video, we're going to try to describe the basic theory of minimal surfaces, tell you about some of the more recent developments that include construction of surfaces and theories to try to explain why examples exist and why some examples don't exist, and finish up discussing surfaces of constant mean curvature and their application in current day research in polymer physics. One simple but important way to realize minimal surfaces is as solutions of a boundary value problem. We can take a boundary in space and try to find a surface of minimum area spanning it. And this can be modeled by using soap films. Okay. Here we have a soap film bounded by four straight lines. The bottom one is free to move. Now watch what happens when I tip it up. Before I get to horizontal, the bottom bar is going to be pulled up by the surface tension exerted on the bar by the soap film. What do we see here? We see that the surface made up of a soap film actually exerts force on the boundary. And it is trying to reduce its total tension and by doing so reduces its area. When the boundary was free to move, the surface shrunk up until it actually disappears. It can be shown mathematically quite easily that trying to reduce total surface tension will produce a surface that also tries to minimize area. So we can model surfaces of minimum area by soap films, which try to reduce their total surface tension. Because we're going to be concerned with surfaces of infinite extent and infinite area, it is important to emphasize that the definition of minimal surface does not mean that a surface has finite area. It just means that it's locally area minimizing. Let me try to explain that by using two things. First of all, the surface behind me cost a surface, about which more later. And second, a, a model of it made out of clay. I'm going to try to explain to you the sculptor's definition of a minimal surface. A surface is minimal if it meets the following criterion. Take a small piece of it, cut it out, <coughs> and save the piece. Then make a wire boundary exactly equal to the boundary of the hole that you cut out. Now use that wire boundary to form a soap film, in other words, an area minimizing surface. Make sure that the piece you cut out matches exactly the soap film. In other words, make sure that the surface is locally area minimizing. If you can do this everywhere on the surface, then the surface you have is a minimal surface. The first real breakthrough in this problem was made by Costa. He was able to define on a rectangular torus a Gauss map in a one form that would produce a surface of genus one necessarily with three topological ends, the top one and the bottom one asymptotic to catenoids and the middle one asymptotic to a plane, which was embedded at infinity. So he was able to solve the period problem, but not able to show that the surface you see here was embedded. Let's take a closer look at this surface. Uh, it is hard to see here that it has lines on it, so let's first start with the fact that there are two obvious vertical planes of reflectional symmetry. Now, through the saddle point there, there are lines that meet these planes of reflectional symmetry at 45 degree angles. Those are hard to see here, but you can imagine the surface twisting around those lines and going into itself. So there is a horizontal line going through the saddle around which the surface rotates into itself. Perhaps this is a little too hard to see, so let's look at an animation of this surface. Look at a rotation of it made several years ago by Jim Hoffman. Here is the cost example. As you can see, it has two vertical planes of symmetry. And as you can imagine, it's a little hard to see, there are two lines crossing at right angles at the saddle diverging into the pink flat end. Now I'm going to increase the genus by one and show you the genus two example on which there are three lines diverging into the flat end and three vertical planes of symmetry. 
and now I'm going to increase the genus by one more, by one more again, and you see that more and more holes are hanging out around the origin, and the surface is looking more and more like a catenoid up and a catenoid down. We increase the genus more, and you see that the structure becomes more and more pronounced. You can almost imagine what's going to happen in, in the next slide and in the next one. Now, here one could begin to ask the question, what happens in the limit? And there are two ways to make sense of that. First of all, let's imagine that the tunnels, while increasing in number as the genus goes up, stay bounded. And they stay nested around a circle of radius 1, that circle being between the two top and bottom catenoid ends passing through the planar end. Then we were able to show that in the limit, the sequence of surfaces converges to the plane union, the catenoid. It converges smoothly away from the circle of intersection. If, however, you went back to the surface and refused to let that happen, because when that happens, the curvature blows up in those holes. If you normalize the curvature so that it was never bigger than one in absolute value, then you would force that ring of holes to expand out, and we were able to show that in that situation, when you went to the limit, you got this familiar surface. Namely, Shirk's singly periodic surface. Here again we have a picture of the original Costa surface. Uh, Meeks and I were able to prove that this surface, as well as all its generalizations which you've just seen, can be deformed through a one parameter family of embedded minimal surfaces. And as the deformation begins, the flat planar end in the middle deforms and becomes catenoidal, just like the ends on top and bottom. To show you this in an animation, we're going to have to, because of the way it was rendered, rotate the surface so it is lying horizontally. Here's the surface rotated, and now we're going to see the one parameter family of deformations. As you can see, it really looks like it's made out of a soap film that's gradually expanding and is about to pop. The marks you see on it are computational errors having to do with the fact that we can computed only a part of the surface and reflected it to get the other half. 